Hi, can I have a large black coffee? Thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Hi, my name's Wayne and I'm from Veggieverse. Find out why this might be my last cup of coffee. It's probably not what you think. Turn the bass up! With global heating and climate change becoming more of a heated topic, pun intended, I decided to look into the impact my coffee and its cup has on the environment. First of all, when you buy coffee and its products, cups, filters, stir sticks, and all that, somebody has to make those. And I hard, find it hard to believe those are made by people nowadays, but somebody's gotta supervise the machines because machines don't do everything yet. Someday. So those people would be at a job if everybody stopped drinking coffee, which would be bad. Right down to the sugar packet companies, uh, like I said, the, the cups, the lids, the trays, uh, even the milk and the creamers. I don't drink milk and creamers, uh, from cows anyway, but there are vegan sources and they would probably take a toll on that, that market because people wouldn't be buying coffee. That's where a lot of the creamers and milk go. An eight ounce cup of coffee, 240 milliliters, contains B1, B2, B3, B5, folate, manganese, potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus. Small doses though, so not a lot, but if you're a coffee drinker, a regular one, going to the drive-thru, all the way through, you might be drinking three cups of coffee a day. So your vitamin B2 could be up to 30%, which is a lot. And coffee has a lot of antioxidants in it, way higher than uh, what I actually thought. I didn't think it really had any. I knew it boosted you a little bit. According to this website, a lot of the people in the Western world get most of their antioxidants from coffee, not from fruits and vegetables. And that's kind of bad, but you're still getting them, so that's kind of good. The first thing that blew my mind was there is estimated 1.1 billion with the B cups consumed every day. That's 400 billion with a B cups consumed yearly. And if those numbers bothered you, check this one out. 2.25 billion cups consumed a day worldwide times that by 365, a little crazy math I did there, and you got a whole new ball game. That number just blows the other number out of the water. And this brings us to caffeine. That good, good stuff that everybody drinks their coffee for. Caffeine is the most commonly consumed psychoactive drug in the world. I don't need a citation for that because that is common knowledge. Everybody should know that. If you did, you know it now. Caffeine makes you more alert, improves your physical readiness, your mental capability, improves your mood, it makes you feel better. It can even boost your metabolism by a small percentage. Uh, these are all short term things though. Uh, people like these effects, that's why they keep going back to the stuff. Some studies have shown that several cups of coffee a day can lower depression, reduce your risk of getting diabetes, Alzheimer's and possibly live longer. But these also come with downsides to them because caffeine is highly addictive. You start drinking more and more and more and more to keep those good moods going and you know, maybe you do think you, that you live longer with it and you're drinking several cups of coffee a day. But at the same time, your body gets used to having that same amount of caffeine, so you need more and more and more to feel those good mood effects. And that comes at a price, mostly in your pocketbook and around your waist. Because most people don't drink coffee with just black like I do. Because I don't drink milk and most coffee shops, hear me out people, most coffee shops don't have soy or plant-based alternatives, so I just drink my coffee black. People go to the drive-thru and they get their coffee with a double-double. For anybody who doesn't live in Canada, 
Double double is two cream, two sugar. That's what a double double is. It's in the dictionary. So all those calories build up. And if you're working a desk job or if you're just not burning those calories off, they accumulate. A few calories here adds up and then it adds up and then it adds up and then the next thing you know, where did all these calories come from? How come I'm getting so fat? I don't know where it's all going on here. As you can see, we're getting into the bad stuff now. So right here, I took two screenshots of my coffee. I took a screenshot of a black coffee. 563 mils, there it is in ounces. That is five calories. I can drink these all day. I wouldn't, but I could, because there's only five calories in them. What's five freaking calories? Most common drink most people get in Canada is a double-double. That's two cream, two sugar. I already told you that. That has a lot of stuff in it. 264 calories. That's a crazy. You get three of those a day, you're over uh, 750. You're getting, you know, get something a little different into it. You could be hitting up towards a thousand calories for three coffees. That's just bonkers. I don't know why I said bonkers. 30 grams of sugar. There's a whole list right here of other crappy things that could be in your coffee. Why would you do that to yourself? Learn to drink black. Mind you, Tim Hortons coffee is pretty garbagey, just black. Uh, but I wanted to make a video, so here we are. Let's start with the trees. 2.5 million acres of land have been cleared so coffee growers can grow their beans. Just in Central America, and that's crazy. Think of all the animals that have lost their homes. Flower and fauna, the deer, I don't know if they have deer down there, but there's animals. They've lost their homes, they have nowhere to go. They have to keep going other places. That's why you have animals going into towns and cities because they've lost their home. And in 2014, there were enough K-cups consumed to go around the world 10 times. That's a lot of K-cups. What about all the fuel that your car is consuming while you're idling in the driveway, just hanging out looking cool, waiting for your coffee to come out the window? That's gotta come from somewhere. All these things have an impact on the environment. And finally, it costs about 140 liters to make one cup of coffee. That includes processing the coffee, brewing the coffee, the cups, the lids, the stir sticks. I don't know if it covers uh, the sugar in the creamers and all those fancy things that go into the drinks. Um, I don't know if it counts for the water that is uh, given to the cows, the water that goes into making the food for the cows to give you milk to put in your coffee so you can drink it as food. I don't know if that's included, but we'll just say 140 liters. That's still a crazy number, even if that is on the low end. So if you're gonna drink coffee, consider drinking shade-grown fair trade coffee. Brew it at home, use a drip brewer, drink it black. Use a mug or a reusable cup. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. Share with all your coffee drinking friends. Is there some impacts of coffee that I might have missed? Leave that in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Keep on lifting, vegheads.